Before the show begins, we offer our condolences to the families and friends of James Avery, who played Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and passed away before 2014 came around the corner. You will be missed by many of us. Get off the frickin' net! And welcome to the Blaze On Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. And welcome back to Blaze On Nation, record on January the 12th, 2014, in a new year. And I have two guests today. Chatterface, all the way back from last episode, and his cameo in episode 8, The Thing. So, welcome back to the show, guys. Oh, yes, and you can talk now. Oh, good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Awkward silences are us. Yep. Awkward breathing sounds. So, yeah... So we have a couple things to talk about and what looks like a lot of jibber jabber in the <laughs> topic <laughs> notes. <laughs> but seriously though, I wanna I wanna address this. Uh you you listen to an audio book that you buy on Audible and you read along with the physical book while you listen. Yes, I do. Why? So, the, well, like, for example, with The Long Way Gone, I don't quite understand the accent. Because I'm looking up Ish- Ishmael Bea is born Sierra Leonean, so he has the African accent, and sometimes I just can't understand what it is he says, and so that's why I use the book. That way I can understand better what it is. Is he said? Wait, wait! I still don't understand. <laughs> the person reading the audiobook you don't understand, or the person writing the book the you don't understand. The person reading it, because he has an accent. I don't think the person who wrote it is also the person who read the audiobook, oh. is it? With a long way gone, it is. It's Malbea. <laughs> Wrote the so book why didn't you just get the read. book and read it? Because I... I prefer using the audiobook, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so then why use both? <laughs> because the book's gotta be in there somewhere. I don't... We'll, we'll talk about this again. I, I, I just... This... Yeah. It, it boggles your mind, I get it. It does, beyond... Yeah, I don't... Okay, for the next part, don't talk, because I got a new bumper, finally, for this next segment. So here it goes. Sidewalk... So now I shouldn't talk. Yes. Oh, okay. Starting now. Like, right now? Yes! (laughs) Okay, let's just get the show on the road. I gotta figure out someday how to... I, I hear it. <laughs> Sidewalk. Uh-uh. No, me either. I told you. No, you didn't. I told you now. Play your bumper. <laughs> sidewalk talk. Talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. Alright, so... We had a name for this segment pretty much uh, quite a bit of time. I just haven't gotten to the bumper until now. So this is basically the journey or what's been going on in the past week. Sidewalk talk. So who shall we start with? Cheddarface, me, Thang. Thang. Okay, Thang, you talk. Okay. So, are we just going to pick a topic from the... No, no. No. Oh, well, you weren't even listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I had to sit through four of those bumpers. We gotta make sacrifices, thing. Right. 
It's what you what's been going on with your week. Oh what you well. Doing? What should you do? Okay. Um. First start off, I beat Uncharted for the first time yesterday. Um, s- yes, six or seven years okay. late. Because I got my okay. PlayStation Three back in October of last year, and it was awesome. I liked it. What did you get the uh, ending? Uh, I liked the ending. The ending was was a nice way to end it off. Well, I still got two more games to go for. That so. last part on this ship was freaking brutal. Yeah, the what you mean like the, the, the cutscene ending or the, the final thing that happens? No, like the, the last level. Oh well, like, I haven't level. gotten to the second game yet, but I will. Yeah, my friend, I think it has. The first and second Uncharted games. And I I watched them this one day play, I think, the second game on his PS3, and he, he had some difficulty with it. <laughs> it's fun to watch him fail, though. I have it's them all, and I played them all twice. Did you beat it on crushing difficulty? Yeah, I did the I did the normal on the first playthrough, and then I did them all in hard mode second time through, and in definitely hard mode took me way longer. Yeah, because yeah, that because the in the church the first one was pretty hard. I died at least I'd, I'd say ten to fifteen times trying to figure out how to you know. I just, just couldn't figure out how to ring the bells. All the bells? Oh, that was easy. As soon as like, wait a minute. Some of us are ring challenged. Yeah, you have to wait. It takes so long to ring one bell if I just run to it, and since I have a gun, then yeah, that was the yeah, first. Yeah. That was like the first puzzle that I solved when my brother well, was playing. When you play the second like, game, when you get to the train part, you'll know what I mean when I when you get to it. But the train is the best part of that game. Yeah, I, I saw footage <laughs> of it. Looks really really fun. Okay, the moving train. I, I, I admit it's awkward because I barely know what is being talked about. Because <laughs> I, I don't have a PS3 or Uncharted. I'm missing out. Yeah, you should get it. You what should. else did you do this week? Well, I don't uh, have any consoles. I just have a PC. Which I hope to upgrade sometime. Uh, I, I really... I don't know. I I don't think I've done that that much other than that huge event. I basically just, you know, stayed home, did laundry, that sort of thing. It's a chore, but you got to do it. I, I can't think of anything anything else to really like say it's Sunday and I'm tired and well, But I'm here. You're awake enough for the show, right? Yeah. I mean, of course I'm awake. Awesome. Maybe. It's Maybe. funny, you know HCG from Trading Revolution? Yep. According to him, he, he's surprised that I have to do chores. <laughs> but, anyhow, what's been... Interesting. Yeah, he... I, I have a life. I have a full-time job, and I work 9 to 5, Monday through Friday and such, so... Job pays well, so yeah, that's basically what I do every week. And video games. Taking what they're given because you're working for a living. I like that. <laughs> that's Huey Lewis. Well, what about your week, Chatterface? Oh, uh, well, um. I. started. I, I got a little bit into Don't Starve on the PS4, which is. A little bit. It's interesting. It's like a brutal version of Minecraft, where the night lasts a lot longer, and there's no digging. It's just finding random crap and seeing what you can do, and dying a lot. Dying a lot. A whole lot of dying goes on. <laughs> and what else did I do? I played. I played. I've been playing some Skyrim a little bit. Oh, Skyrim is brilliant. Yesterday, I brought Daisy. Because I let Brandon and Yasha convince me to. <laughs> and it's f- I played like four hours of that today. It's 
good, but that too is very brutal and involves a lot of dying and a lot of frustration and a lot of anger and a lot a lot of time trying to find where you are because there's not really a map and there's just things everywhere. Yeah, I, I yeah, uh, desolate wasteland, that, very lonesome. Yep. Yeah, I, I hear Such about lonely. that kind of stuff a lot on the podcasts I listen to. Dead worker party, check them out. <laughs> And uh, I read Fahrenheit 451, which cool. is really, really, really good. So that was my week. Okay, I guess I'm left. So about Thursday through yesterday, I've been recovering. Well, I ended up with a cold on Wednesday or Thursday. Got worse on Thursday. And then Friday, I thought I was mostly good, but oh yeah, Thursday I had to cancel the show that night, so that's why it got aired later this weekend, being Sunday the 12th, and I've recently gotten into playing Grand Theft Auto 4 now that the game is where Windows Live trash, but that is finally fixed, and after all that with games for Windows Live, I finally realized how crappy the service is. I hope <laughs> it just gets thrown out. Like, uh, I'm now having to re-download games like Batman, the Batman Arkham series because WB Games has switched those all to Steamworks, so now I gotta re-download all of those now that they're Steam integrated as opposed to games for Windows Live. And good lord, I'm having such a fun time on Grand Theft Auto 4. Let's go bowling. Uh, yeah, go bowling. <laughs> that, that, that was my first date on the game, actually. It's uh, everybody's. It's like, yeah. it's like I'm playing a dating sim. Just <laughs> stop calling. Grand Theft Auto 5 blows it out of the water. Oh, I, I thought you meant all the hookers and stuff. Uh, no, the the dating sim stop calling thing for me is uh, is Pokemon Heart Gold. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I just I just want to let you know that my Rattata is in the top percentage of all Rattatas. Come and fight me, IRL. <laughs> <laughs> my level ten mouse will trounce your level ninety water turtle. Oh, and then yep. last week my school had. Well, yeah the. The first three days of last week were all some kind of cancellation. Monday was bus cancellation, Wednesday was bus cancellation, and no, Wednesday was the bus cancellation number two, and in between on that Tuesday, school was canceled, so. Because of the whole polar vortex that went through. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's actually being declared the most annoying term on the web. I forget where, but I think I'll link to that in the show notes for sure. Yeah, I'm in Arizona, and it's a balmy 60. <laughs> it was um, in Minneapolis when the when the cold storm went through. The wind chill made it negative uh, 44 degrees, and you can understand why people wanted to stay inside for that. Sweet baby Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's the coldest I've ever seen, you know. Yeah, the, the, the coldest it's ever been here is uh, 20. <laughs> yeah, we haven't, where I live, which is southwestern Ontario, Canada, we haven't had... Canada. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to say it that way. But, um, we are... Uh, That's I don't the kind of thing non-Canadians say. <laughs> we, we haven't had a school cancellation since like when I was in grade 7 which by now is about 5 years ago so 4 to 5 yeah about 5 years ago or so so shall we get shall we get into tonight's topics records have been broken for temperatures a lot everywhere of yeah all right let's get into the topic cold is ice which means for the next 4 seconds shh Otherwise, it's like, getting removed from the original audio, because that's how I edit it. Anyhow, <laughs> let's do this thing. Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. 
Alright, so this this week on the rundown, we have um, this French comic who goes by Dieu Donné, which ironically, um, the translation I find for that is God Given, or God Gave, in which what's going on there is he threatens court action over... Well, what's happened here is he got his show in France cancelled over his um, blasphemous speech about Jews and doing this Quenel, which is supposed to be a um, Nazi salute or whatever. And funny thing is he fails to realize that there are hate speech laws in France. Another topic is this thing that's go been going on with, um, if you've heard of it, Minecraft. I know you have, Cheddarface. Oh, uh, yeah, that was a that was a bloody business. I'm glad it's mostly squared away now. But yikes. Yeah, so what's been going on there is this guy who goes by Kale Rose, um, made up a site called Minecraft.c. Minecraft. CO, I highly recommend you not go to that site. It's a piece of crap. He totally ripped off the Minecraft logo and name. And to make it worse, not only is there advertised to be porn on his fake Minecraft server, but there also... Is. I mean, not that I've... No, gone on and, and uh, seen it, but uh, uh, I haven't either. And then that he's accepting donations of it, and well, not donations of porn, donations of money. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't say donations of porn. I said... log on with your porn pal account. <laughs> <laughs> I don't porn see any. Crap. I don't see any. I don't see any porn ads on the actual site. I'm on it right now. There's just. It's just a blatant ripoff of the other yeah, side. No, the Minecraft server has uh, special places that you can TP to that are rooms where the paintings have been modified to be pornography. Ah. Oh, so at the server. Okay, so it's not a On web Minecraft page. server itself. Got it. Yes. Uh, I and would then... say, so what? I mean, I don't play Minecraft often, but... No, uh, it's just this... If he took the domain and he took the artwork and he has been very he's been talking to Bitburner about it Bitburner who created the Minecraft domain registered the name copyrighted it and made the logo and made the Minecraft server and made the website and he's been talking to him about it and being very you know blatant that he did rip it off and being just a, a jerk about everything Oh and then, that's good and then the additive to that is he's had history um, on minute, I'll link, I'll actually link to that too in the show notes, possibly, in which if you look at Mississippi Mugshots, he's already had a previous arrest once for fraud, or at least I'm guessing that's what the letter rep stands for. Uh, I think that just stands for felony. More of that. And then we have the Michael Bay... Um, meltdown at CES 2014. And yeah, that last, sucked. And lastly, the Shia LaBeouf announcement of retirement. So, which topic do we want to talk about first? Which is, well, I don't know what there's what there is to talk about this Dudon guy other than that he's a, I don't know a jerk, but. <laughs> Okay, in that case, let's get into that topic. So, what's gone on is, if it'll load up here, he ran a show in France, and um, he had already been known for his quote-unquote vitriolic outbursts. Vitriolic. Vitriolic outbursts. Vitriolic. <laughs> against Jews and use of the controversial Quenel, which is allegedly a quasi-Nazi salute. And he threatened legal action on Monday after France officials banned his show. Alright. 
What, Who what, cares? Well, what I find, well, what I find funny here is that he doesn't realize because in France, and I think actually for sure in other places in Europe, there is a law against hate speech where you cannot discriminate against any groups or you will be in jail. Which has actually gone on with a couple other groups like some Twitter users who made anti-Semitic tweets. Excuse me if I pronounced that incorrectly. You did, but we'll, we'll let it slide. <laughs> but, yeah. But I, and, I guess that's my... Well, you know, what's interesting is that we see that happening in America, too. Yeah. There, there's a breach of freedom of speech all over the place, but... Then again, in cases with Europe, there's already been a law in place. But... Which, honestly, it wouldn't be a bad thing to see that overlooked. But I guess the history of racism and all that, and what then with the whole stuff about with the Holocaust and everything, because it, it of course still affects people in very negative ways because of, like, with the Jews, a lot of them were exterminated by the Holocaust, and so really all the yeah. anti-Semitism isn't tolerated, but... Yeah, well, you see, I think the thing is, is that people just take comedy a little too seriously, because mm -hmm. there are bound to be comedians who, who will use jokes like that you know, from time to time, but not excessively, and, you know, if it's supposed to be comedy, then you're not supposed to take it seriously. And I think the that's thing the is, reason. Go ahead. Well, nothing that, there's nothing that doesn't offend anybody that's also funny, <laughs> I guess. You can't be a comedian and not offend somebody. It's yeah, just I a question of who is it okay to offend. Well, it's definitely not certain races in Europe. Well, if if they ended up, you know, making these, you know, these offensive jokes and they didn't know about the law, then, and they were never told about it, then, I guess, I guess it would make sense to, you know, sue. But if you did know it, yet you're still suing them anyway, you're kind of being ignorant. So the question is, do we know if you know, the law was put into place before they made those, you know, I think that I think that semitism law remarks. Well, like, did they know? Did they know before? Did they know about the law or not? Because they did. They're just being ignorant. Well, they should know. I mean, you should know about the law regardless. I mean, you can't just say, "Oh, I didn't know that murder was against the law. <laughs> I should get pardoned." Yeah. I mean, that's all I have to say about that. I mean... Yeah, I don't really... Yeah, this story is kind of, it seems like, oh, oh well. Well, let's get on to... We gonna do Sheila Booth, Michael Bay, or Minecraft? I don't... I don't have a preference of order. How about I you, don't either. Okay, nope. let's go Minecraft. With what's been going on there? It sucks. <laughs> so how <laughs> how it all started is um, Twitter who goes by at G M E M S T R or G M M S T R or his name G Gabriel Simmer. He tweeted at Minecraft or Bitburner. Is this for real? And Links to the Minecraft.co name, which I just noticed the what the Web of Trust thing finally has a new thing on it because I set up uh, well not much of a campaign, but basically 
go to this site and let's all give it bad reviews so that everyone knows to stay away from it. And Bitburner's the and then basically that's what started Bitburner's anger towards it. And so basically what's going on currently is or has he already gotten it taken to court cheddar fix? I don't think he has, but he's definitely gotten a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, it will definitely be resolved in Bitburner's favor. Yeah. It's especially if especially with Kale Rose already having a criminal record. But yeah, I don't really think that Biddy has anything to worry about. <laughs> but um so basically, like we said before, the Minecraft logo got ripped off, and on the with this Kale Rose has put it under his company's name. So he's claiming that it's all his, and worse yet, there's pornography being involved, and then also. Apparently, he's also made a spread shirt shop, which, if any listeners don't know what that is, it's basically a merchandise shop you can set up where you can sell mugs or shirts or any of that with your logo on it. And, um, apparently, Mr. Rose has been, um, Using explicit logos and naming his spread shirt store as something to do with Minecraft. Basically, yeah, plus he's just a jerk. I mean, he's making fun of pretty much everything that Bitburner says to him and, you know, making fun of his injury that he has on his back and it's, it's, saying that it's possible for him to be shut down and putting his own copyright statements on his website. It's on funny, the logo. he says uh, all this stuff about Creative Commons, and I, I think there was this one tweet from him as well about that, um, oh, Bitburner doesn't have the copyright set up for it, and which is completely untrue. Because if you look on the site, there is the 2011 copyright of Minecraft, unless it's 2013. I forgot which it is now. It's, it's 2011 on the real site, and it says 2014 on the ripoff site. Okay. So clearly, the site that ripped it off has the later date, and thus will probably not win if there's a lawsuit. I mean, seriously. Well, yeah, I know, and Bit. The, the logo was made by somebody that Bitburner personally knows and con and who he contracted and paid to make the logo. Oh, uh, okay. So, you see, I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about this. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I should have told you it's about not, that. I'm a terrible host. Yeah, I just don't think it's anything that we're going to necessarily have to worry about. I mean, it seems fairly cut and dry. This guy's a jerk. He's got a history with being known as a jerk. He's stealing this stuff and using it to draw kids into his server for porn. Yeah. And he, he has these, he has correspondence with Bitburner on Twitter saying yes, what are you going to do about it? It's, so. it's funny too. One of his tweets um, on the 18th of November, he tweeted at this other person who has the Twitter name Kale underscore Rose to stop taking his name and that he's important too <laughs> but whether that's any contributor to the matter or not which I doubt it is but you just found it funny that he's complaining about that it is funny yeah he's, he's the people, person who obviously ripped off the website is either jealous or a jerk or if he's trying to desensitize kids then he's probably I was going to say a pedophile but <laughs> I don't know I really don't know what I don't what know have you seen his is. have you seen his 
is Mugshot. Bebop no, I haven't Vox, seen I any of this. Bebop Vox said that he resembled a, a pedophile. I'll find the tweet, but it, it was it was pretty funny. Oh, well, great, mar- great minds think alike, I guess. Here I'll send it to you in Scott chat, and no listeners will know where that is. But yeah, he. Um, okay, so he got fucked the 22nd of April and released just about how many hours? Well, in that tweet it says he was booked August. August, not April. 8 is August. Oh. Right. (laughs) You said April. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm just double off. Yeah, it's yeah, it just, it sucks, but I think BitBurner doesn't have anything to worry about, so. Oh, what the charge description was actually was malicious mischief. <laughs> and the it sounds like a, a Rayman wow. Raving Rabbids game. Malicious the, mischief, yeah. And the offense, what well, the offense date was 2011, October the 7th. This piece of crap. A filler is to it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't even know him. I just. I got. I really have nothing to say. I mean, if he's gonna. Yeah, let's move on. If he's gonna do that. If he's gonna just make a website and then try and advertise a whole bunch of pornography on the server, then that's his choice. I mean, I guess we can. Like try and spread the word, but I don't know if it's really going to make that much of a difference. But as, you know, aside from that, with the whole website debacle about it being a ripoff, uh, Kale is obviously not going to win that lawsuit. That's what I think. Nope. And actually, if this actually for sure it'll highly likely work in court, it'll definitely restore a bit of my faith in the U.S. court because. Some of these, like some of these bullcrap um, charges uh, over silly things like the Justin Carter case and whatnot, or even giving the serious offenses low um, sentences, just like, come on, people. It's either this. Crime? It's not even a crime, so don't waste your money and time on it. Just leave it to the parents or the internet or any of that. Or if it's a serious crime, actually give them a proper sentence. Not a sentence that might be more fitting towards these less serious ones, even though these less serious ones really shouldn't have it in the first place. Anyways. Alright, I'm going to sum it up and say that the way that he's trying to lure kids in, I'm just going to call him a desensitizing pedophile. Okay, sounds good. (laughs) There you have it. (laughs) Let's move forward. Okay, so next up we have the Michael CES meltdown. Michael Bay. what, What had happened was... What 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 was this about again? I I forget well, what he, they were talking the, the about. Samsung had him up there to talk about their new TV that's all bendy and stuff, and they their teleprompter screwed up and it didn't work. And he went up there and he had a little panic attack and just had to vamp basically. Yeah. And I don't like his movies, but I felt bad for him because that sucked. And th- there's some stuff about whether it's just a talent prompter, but I'd say definitely part of it would have been, or at least could have been, nervousness being up in front of that many people. Yeah, I mean, public speaking is hard. It, it's it is. very difficult. And there's no perfect teleprompter. I mean, things are eventually going to glitch and not work nowadays. But, 
you know, it's just it's just kind of sad that, you know, he probably felt so overwhelmed after something just went completely wrong that he couldn't go with it. So he just decided to walk off. I mean, I felt like that sometimes. Yeah, actually, um, a bit ago, um, we my school had a Christmas assembly, and it. It, it kind of exactly. makes it a bit nervous being up in front of the whole darn school. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah it's, it was, it's... Oh, go ahead. It was just... It can't be easy. I mean, he's up there, you know, promoting his product and what he's doing, and there's millions of people out there, millions of people watching on TV, and they can't even get their freaking teleprompter to work, so... Yeah, and plus, it's really nerve-wracking up there to be in front of a lot of people, and, you know, something that you can say can really change people's input about what they're being shown at the whole, you know, cyber electronic show. So, I mean, I can understand why he kind of, you know, felt overwhelmed after the teleprompter screwed up. And then yep. th this comment on the IGN YouTube video, um... According to this one person, it, apparently it's weird or something. So, something to do with with that, um, it being put for some reason. Well, wondering why it's difficult to, to um, explain your personal um, opinion on this stuff. Or personal thoughts on this stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> Here, I'll I'll get it pulled up. Um, if I can get the comment section loaded up. Here. And I'll link to this video in the show notes as well. Oh yes, that's a personal question. Why the heck do you need a screen to tell you how you personal personally feel? As a comment from user Batman. Well, you know, they were having him there to advertise their product for them, so they wanted him to talk about how this new TV screen was going to influence his own movies, and he probably didn't really have anything to say about that, so he was counting on them to come up with does, something for him to say. Does Michael Bay even... Is he usually out, like, talking to the public? No. Or, okay, no, he's so a movie that, director. <laughs> yeah, so that explains it. I mean, he doesn't spend a lot of time talking to crowds, so obviously he wasn't fit for that when that one thing just, you know, decided to not work. So I can understand. Yeah, it's I mean, really how, how do you think the president would react if one of his teleprompters went out? He would do the same thing. Because they're not necessarily his personal feelings. They're, his, they're the personal feelings that somebody else wrote for him. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the same thing happened here. But my thing is, if Samsung's trying to get us to buy their new fancy, really expensive TV, maybe they should also get their teleprompters to work. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I can definitely third that. And someone's breathing a lot into their microphone. It's not me. <laughs> Thanks. I'm the one with the squeaky chair. <laughs> and I'm the squeaky one... chair. Yeah, that's me. And the, squeaky and chair I and breather. I'm the one with the great microphone. Or at least possibly. I could be wrong. Uh, Alright, let's move on. Do you have to burp? Okay, yes, oh, let's yeah. move on. So, our last article for this week is... Shia LaBeouf retires from all public life. Or at, least, or at least that's what he claims. He's, he's been doing all... He's, first he gets copyrighted for basically ripping off this comic for uh, a short film he made. 
Then he apologizes and rips off Tiger Woods' apology in order to apologize for ripping off somebody else. And then they find more things he ripped off. And then he thinks he can make it all up with by h- hiring a skywriter to apologize. And then people mock him. And so he's just, he's just, you know, says, well, you know. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games, basically. <laughs> Yeah, you pretty much summed it up because I had no idea that this actually happened. Um, it's a crybaby. I, I I like the Transformers movies. I've seen them, but as for this, I haven't really been following it. Well, basically, He's... what happened was, well, yeah, that was um, he plagiarized a book for making a short film out of it. And, a lot and he of wasn't people... even subtle about it. Like, he... There was entire chunks of dialogue, word for word. Yeah, and... He never credited the the author, who's Daniel Close. And... Pretty much okay, everyone we... began to notice, Hey, this is really close to Mr. Close's novel. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the, the synopsis on the IGN article. It says, uh, It began when it was revealed that LaBeouf had pla- blatantly plagiarized comic book creator Daniel Close's graphic novel, Justin M. Da- Damiano, for his short film, HowardCantor.com. LaBeouf only made matters worse by also tweeting plagiarized apologies to Close from other celebrity and newsworthy mea culpas. LaBeouf even went so far as to skywrite an apology to Close. He then tweeted a photo of the cease and desist order sent to him by Close's attorney. And then he gave a less than penitent interview to Bleeding Cool, wherein he declared, "Authorship is censorship. Simple. Should creation have to check with a lawyer?" Because of this, uh, celebrities and artists such as Seth Rogen and Patton Oswalt mocked him online, causing him to say, "Well, la di da, I'm done. Screw you." And the and the, the internet collectively declared, "Who cares?" Yeah, I, you pretty much summed it up. I've got, I really have no words. He's just, he's, uh, he's just he, he's stupid. He's got great movies, but... The, no, he doesn't. Been, no, he doesn't. In my opinion. I don't think it, it would be at, going far to say he has contributed least, nothing to the film industry, except for maybe Holes. Well, was a good Holes movie. Transformers. Oh, yeah, Holes was a very Transformers? Good movie was only good because of the CGI. That movie would have been just as good if Shia LaBeouf was not in it. You also said something hmm. about Megan Fox a bit ago. Well, yeah, no, she not was... Not on air, though. She yeah, was just no. a pair of boobs. They could have replaced her with anybody. <laughs> Eye candy for the whole audience, especially the boys. Uh-huh. And the girls that lean that way. Oh, c- careful. We gotta keep this a PG... Uh- Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least that's what I'm aiming for. Come on. Well, I want probably that want me to be profane. Be profane for you. I, 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 I can be profane for you. Feel you know, people choose one that. side. They choose the same side, or they choose the opposite side, or they choose both sides. You know, it's just it's their choice. You're cruel, hey. Chatter. <laughs> okay, I'm done. So you're scaring two yeah. dog to wait. But I guess Arthur. that's pretty much all we have. Sorry to anyone um, who was offended by his language. There's two here. There's two more. There's two more. I'm highlighting them in the dock profusely. You are. Oh, right. Wait. Oh, games of the year. Thanks and for reminding one. me. Okay, so, JBJ, how many new games did you play last year? Um, last year I started a bit of Grand Theft Auto 4. It's not new. Um. But let me see my seamless. There's loadout. Loadout. Yes, I can work that one in as a 2013 game. 
Um, what else do I have on my Steam list? Um, Gary's mod wouldn't be new, I wouldn't think. No. Um, Games that came out last year. Yeah, last I'll year, look 2013. <laughs> I'll look on your Steam profile for you. Um, what else do I have here? Wow, uh, I, I suck. Oh, there's play Smite. Games. Um, was this on our 20... Well... 12? Crap. Okay, I suck. Wow. Oh, I'm, this I'm, just goes I'm, to multiplayer. That's some mod. Oh, it, well, true, but it's a good mod. Everyone, everyone should have that game. Seriously, just get yeah, it. If you don't have it. Multiplayer, it's awesome. It really um, is. I, I, I enjoyed it too. Oh, I just popped a zit and it's bleeding. <laughs> like everyone wants to know that you popped a zit. Come on, my mother does that to me all the time. I'm hanging in here like a trooper, but I am gushing out of my face right now. TMI. You're gonna gross out the listeners. Um. All of them. Any other one? Oh, Space Engineers! That's a 2013 game. Any real games or just, like, stuff I like that? I think that's Early Access. Isn't that Early Access? <laughs> we'll count it for his sake. Alright. Uh, I can just find something to wipe up his blood with. <laughs> well, a, a, lot of, Suck. a lot of companies consider the, um, the Minecraft as a 2009 game. When it was actually when it's actually a 2011 game because that's when it was officially released. All right, fascinating. Do you have any? Uh, do you have a top five list thing? Top five list. All right. Um, yeah, I. It's, it's kind of hard to to put together, but um, I think I, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. There is uh, Saints Row Four. I think one that I liked because of the whole uh, superpowers thing that you get. That was just a fun game. It was. Uh, uh, Beyond Two Souls is up there as well. Um, best interactive movie I've ever played. <laughs> and it's got two players as well. So I had somebody to play with. I have a brother. We switch between the roles. And like I said, just just stellar acting and um, atmosphere graphics. Uh, the Last of Us <laughs> for its survival horror out. El- what? And Willem Dafoe. What? Willem Dafoe, yes. Yeah, he, he was so wrong. scary. Wait, it looks like him. It looks like him. <laughs> uh, the, like I said, The Last of Us, great game, survival horror. I'm still working on um, the survival difficulty, and that's pretty tough as well. Uh, Bioshock Infinite was... It was okay. I mean, I don't know if it necessarily makes my top five, but I think the thing that, that makes it up thing. is the story. Is the story at the end? Just when you put all the pieces together, it just blows my mind. And um, I mean, there. And then there's. Did I say Grand Theft Auto Five already? Mm-mm. I think that would be my my number one of 2013. Uh, I I I love to play that game, but it's not on PC yet, unfortunately. So I'm still waiting for Rockstar to release it. Once yeah, they had better release it. And the reason why Grand Theft Auto V is my number one is because of just that's there's so much stuff you can do in the world. There's so much stuff you can collect. The you know the the graphics it looks beautiful, and there's the multiplayer which is insanely huge. Like sixteen players in one session, and you can like. Watch people commit crimes. Watch them being chased down. You know, there, there's just so much stuff in that game that you can play it for hours and hours. So I think I think those were my top five of 2013, and I can't wait to see what's going to come this year. So, yeah, that's it. Well, feel free to send me your list in the show notes or whatever. Actually, both of you feel free to do so, and I can put those in the yeah, I got. official show notes. 
I got my top five, and they're even uh, ranked and categorized because I did this for my blog post. Okay, so number five, uh, Tomb Raider. It was fantastic. Yeah, that, it was beautiful. That game was pretty good. Reminded me of was, uh, Uncharted a little bit. It's, it's very it's similar to Uncharted. It's yeah. A, it's the first Tomb Raider game that I had ever got rated M. It's wor- it, it deserves a two because it's got some of the most gruesome death sequences. Yeah, and Very plus good Lara Croft gets beat the hell out of in situations. Like, yes. there's so, there are so many things in that game that just make you feel sorry for it. Like, you feel like you have yeah, and, you know, this and as a, with her. as a guy, I felt really bad playing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, like, I I don't, I'm too. making this... This you, poor woman get the crap beat out of her. <laughs> you're a domestic abuse gamer. All right, uh, number four uh, was Monaco. I've read a yeah, lot of Monaco was about that. this really fun, goofy stealth uh, heist game. Great multiplayer, great co-op, just fantastic. Number three was Assassin's Creed Four. It was the only game that I got for my PS4, because there was nothing really else out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, PS4 listed li- library games is pretty much just dry. But they're going to include the whole PlayStation Now thing in the summer, which allows you to uh, stream older games. Yes, and I can't wait. I, I guess it's some sort of a, dev- a separate device that you use for it or something to connect to a I virtual think network. I- it's going to be a paid downloadable service, but I don't know. Yeah, it might. We'll see. Uh, number two was The Last of Us. Uh, yeah. I don't <laughs> it's, that game. It's, it's really good. It was fantastic. It just, it just didn't do anything wrong. It, it no, was perfect. No. I mean, the and only complaint number one, I have is... is ni- Sorry. No, go ahead. Let's say, well, it's not really that much of a complaint, but those those clickers and those stalkers are really, 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 really a um, big challenge. You just gotta, but that that's what makes the game so good. And and Ellie, fourteen years old, she's badass. Yeah, the the characterization in that was was almost flawless. Uh, number one, Fire Emblem Awakening. So oh, good. interesting. So good. What I what bought sold a 3DS to play that game. What sold it was for just, you? Like the the story w- hit all the right notes. The gameplay was engrossing and challenging, and it made you really care about your characters because of the whole permadeath mechanic, and you had to decide on the fly: is it worth it to? Is it, is this character worth enough to me? Do I care enough about them, and do I think they can contribute enough? that if they die, I would have to restart, or can I go on without them? And you build these relationships between your characters, and you see the different dialogue that happens, and you see it happen on the battlefield, where they actually... The, the characters that have better relationships with each other fight better with each other, and you can build it up, and you can see, and you can witness it, the effects of it. And the story was great, and the art was great, and the music was great, and it was just... And I played that game, like, three times... It was just, it was fantastic. So, cool. are we going to do a game of the year for 2013 overall? For me, it was Fire Emblem. Yeah, and for me, it was Grand Theft Auto V. Okay, so... But, but The Last of Us was definitely a close second. It was, yeah. I have to agree that it was it was my uh, my number two. Well, so and for JBJ, uh, it was a uh, loadout, right? <laughs> loadout, space engineers, and that is about it. So, <laughs> space so, engineers. <laughs> what what's gonna be the tiebreaker here? So, what is space engineers? It's uh, basically Minecraft meets space. And I actually haven't done an episode 2 Let's Play yet, but I do have the first episode of my new Let's Play of it on my YouTube channel. So, um, 
So hang on, hang on. I'm looking up. Game. I'm looking up space engineers. It's also in a bundle at the moment. Apparently so. Here oh yeah. You heard it, it here first. You haven't even played this game. You don't even own this game. Actually, uh -oh. I use it through the Steam shared library. That's how I access it. <laughs> because one of my cousins shared their library with it. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, you're, you you're, played you're it, but you don't own it. Pretty much. Your game is here, you <laughs> play illegally. No, I play it through this fam through the um, family family shared library thing that's on Steam. You better make sure that your cousin doesn't do anything stupid, or you. <laughs> so, are Guess we gonna call Last of Us the game of the year, or what shall we call the game of the year here? Well, I think we have all our different choices, but I think when it comes down to it, the real choice, the real winner is Aliens Colonial Marines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Game of the year. Must be, yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> so, Aliens Colonial War? No, Colonial Marines, or uh, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. <laughs> yeah, that one too. I can't decide, but I think, I think when, you, when you get down to the nitty-gritty, I think Aliens Colonial Marines is the obvious choice for Game of the Year 2013. There. Yep. There you have it. Okay, we let all me edit this quickly. That way it shows for the ones who are deaf out there. No offense. Too. Okay, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Colonial... Why would somebody deaf know about your podcast? <laughs> That's like my sister the other day. She's like, I figured out why police cars have sirens. Because if you're blind, then you'll still know they're coming up behind you when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, people. That is their game of the year for 2013, apparently. What blind person is driving? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So... Let's get those plugs in there, because we are going to conclude the show. Where can people find you, the thing? Well, if you were to type my name... Marines. Yeah, you can find me in there. Um, if you, you could find my profile just by searching what my name actually is, the underscore thing. I'm the first result to appear. If not, then there's probably something wrong with your Steam client. And yeah, just uh, oh, if you're going to add me, just tell me why. And then you also add your Twitter, the thing twenty ten all one word, right? Oh yeah, at at. I add you on Steam because you're my favorite. Thank you. That's why I appreciate that. <laughs> you're and your plugs, Cheddarface. Uh, at Cheddarface underscore. Uh, my blog is at m a a s o o dot net and. My dog's name is Hank. Oh, I was going to guess Jennifer. You thought it my just... dog's name was Jennifer? <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. It is wait. a random wait, guess. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I know. I know you thought that was funny. Why? Because it's random. What? Random... Oh. Oh, my gosh. Where I cannot believe I... Why or did I play that one? No, I didn't. Hold on. Be quiet for four seconds, because I gotta play the details bumper, because I forgot all about it. Wait, so be quiet right right now? Yes. Now, then. Yes. Okay, so don't talk. Exactly. Nor, <coughs> nor any other sound. <clears throat> Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Okay, there we go. Got the bumper in there. Maybe I'll add that in I, later. But I um, like how you, your Steam profile says your date of birth was September 18th, 2013. Yeah, that's because no one noticed it was my birthday that day, so I decided, you know what? For next... Wait, the what year? 
2013. <laughs> 2013? Oh, crap. Wow. You mean 1913? Oh. I'm at 1996. You're an imposter. <laughs> I'll get that fake hedgehog. Oh, gosh. But um, just some shout-outs here. Um, Card Gifts is a new Steam group where you can get awesome card gifts. Um, and watch, currently I'm in charge there for the next five weeks, so... Yeah, so check them out. And we what, are until they the, throw you. <laughs> the cards are they're just cards. There's no such thing as a card gift, it's just a card. It's, it's a gift of and cards. somebody gives the card to you. Yeah, I know, I get that, but still. <laughs> and um well, screw Trading Revolution, also another Steam group, just a gaming blog and uh their WordPress site. It's just a gaming blog with the L O G G, not just the regular spelling, wordpress.com. They have some stuff there, indiegamers.co.uk. And I'm still waiting for them to add capability for MP3 files and all that other stuff. FFsplit.com is supposed to be basically the VLC media player of live streaming. Just a bit better looking than me, I'll see. Wait, what is? FF Split. Nah, man. OBS. That, that's what I've heard a lot of. OBS is great. Open broadcast. Casting software. Thought that's what you were talking about. But um, that's all the shoutouts and everything. And you can find Showtime. My shoutout. My shout out goes to Don Matrick for being Don Matrick. Okay, do you have any shout outs thing? Don't ever change, Donnie. Uh I have a shout out to people who respect me and who don't actually beg for games from me, because that would be awesome. Hey. If hey, you hey, want hey, if... hey. Hey. Hey, can I have a game? <laughs> <laughs> There's an example for you. So is that is that is that a maybe? <laughs> well, I'll I'll consider it, but so you know. so you're telling me there's a chance. There is a chance. I didn't be counted in for that either. I expect. Just don't be Dude, a beggar. Forget I ever said that. So I guess we have our shout outs out, and I'll get myself plugged. Um, Twitter. At JBJ Blaze, you can find um, announcements for the podcast or my other podcast, The Clunky Conundrum. So I'll be able to air a sixth episode for that. Um, I can't believe you do a podcast about Cookie Clicker. <laughs> People have told me that a million times, but. That's like doing a podcast about Progress Quest. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> Down my computer, as you can see, there are bars going across the screen. It's very interesting. I've clicked a cookie, and now I'm about to click a cookie once more. And I've now you, clicked three cookies. And then you can also find the new Clicky Clicker show notes at tccpod.blogspot.ca, even though that's not this <laughs> podcast, on um, blazonation.tk for show notes and other blog articles, etc., and then the Steam Jay, I clicked 846 cookies. That is down from my average of 923, but it's better than last week's of 736. This is a flippin' awesome. And YouTube channel, JBJ Boys. The flippin' awesome. All that stuff. So, yeah, I guess that's all for this episode of Blaze on Nation before I run out of breath, which I think I am about to run out of breath. So I Fascinating. Think, I thank you both for coming on the show tonight. I love you. Yep, glad to be here. I love Can you I all a... too. Well, I love you. Oh, and if you want to have a good scare from a comic, um, Bong Cheon, Bong Cheon Dong Ghost. There, it's a web comic. Oh. It's good to come oh. to me. Because everybody's going to be able to look that up. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll link to it in the show notes. Just look up. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> but um, Dude, I guess just search for that. So I'll consider that all for this episode. And actually, those links. Wait, I watched a really, I watched a really good YouTube video yesterday. It was called. <clears throat> uh huh. Well, I guess you probably won't hear this bumper either. But here it goes anyways. Um, if you talk during it, you won't be heard. Because I'll Long edit chomp. it out. Ghost. Yes. Now to the bumper. <laughs> what do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes, the flippinawesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes, and to sponsor a future episode. I'll have to... I'll have to... Bong, chong, dong, ghost. Sounds like some kind of weird porn. Here, I'll get the link to it. For you. I Bong Cheon. Okay, so many people are screwing up the spelling of that. Bong Chong Dong Ghost. Okay, let's see. Where is it? Okay, that's not it. Where is it? Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. What? I just like scrolled down through it and then suddenly it stopped and it was like, oh god. Oh, you found it! <laughs> oh my god, that was, that was, that was genuinely I've frightening. I've seen it before. Uh, I can that, still that remember was... the first time when I saw it. I was just that thinking, was genuinely Holy frightening. Shit. And, uh, my, my mother thought I swore, but I was... I kept on reassuring her. I almost swore, but I didn't. <laughs> you, you should have seen PewDiePie's reaction to it. He literally left the room. I just did Yeah, that. PewDiePie I don't care for. He just screams all the time, but... Uh, honestly, I prefer other... Um, stuff than PewDiePie. D- sh- should I have another look at that um, comic just to see if it scares me? And you can hear my reaction. 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 My reaction.